In this video, I'll repair a PC that was bricked by a failed BIOS upgrade. A Raspberry Pi will be used to program the new firmware directly onto a motherboard's serial flash chip. My videos are fast paced, but a full summary is provided on my website, and a link will be placed in the video description. Here's a Dell Vostro 410 motherboard circa 2008. The BIOS chip is often located near the CMOS battery. This motherboard has a Core 2 Quad 2.4 GHz CPU with 4 GB of RAM. Not a great computer, but still useful. By the way, the techniques used in this video are applicable to other motherboards, and are not limited to Dells or even to computers, routers, TVs, oscilloscopes, even some washing machines. Any electronic device that supports upgrades can have reprogrammable firmware. In addition to repairs, you can also modify firmware with custom code. For example, you could have some custom graphics appear on startup. I wanted to upgrade the Vostro's maximum RAM from 4 to 8 gigs, which is only supported by the latest firmware. So I downloaded the BIOS update utility from the Dell support page. I closed all open apps, disabled the AV software, and ran the update. It promptly crashed and bricked the computer. Nothing but a black screen on boot, with fans running at full blast. Afterwards I looked online and found numerous angry posts regarding Vostro's bricked by the 103 firmware. The overwhelming conclusion was you needed to pay Dell $200 for a new motherboard, and that wasn't going to happen. Amazingly, some of the posts are over 10 years old, and yet I was still able to download the sketchy firmware upgrade from Dell yesterday. I read several suggested remedies such as pulling the CMOS battery or using the CMOS reset jumper. However, the battery is only for the real-time clock on the CMOS. CMOS is commonly used to refer to where the BIOS settings are stored, and generally speaking it's not on the same chip as the BIOS firmware. These are settings you can set upon boot such as boot order, integrated peripheral options, fan control, etc. The settings are used by the BIOS but clearing them will not repair the corrupt firmware on the BIOS chip. It was also suggested that the default firmware could be restored using different keyboard shortcuts and or a USB boot drive. However, the BIOS is the basic input-output system of the computer. Its job is to load the settings and initialize the inputs and outputs, such as the keyboard and USB. Therefore, I didn't put much faith in these recommendations. Nonetheless, on some other boards, it is possible to recover the default firmware. However, I'm pretty confident that's not the case with this one, and I'll show you why. Here's the EEPROM chip that stores the BIOS. EEPROM stands for Electrically Erasable Programmable Read-Only Memory. EEPROMs have non-volatile memory, which means their data is preserved even when the power is turned off. They're referred to as read-only, but it is possible to write to them using an EEPROM programmer. For the record, this one's a flash memory chip, which is a type of EEPROM, or it might be more accurate to say, flash was developed from EEPROM. I believe the unpopulated 8-pin pad underneath the flash chip is where a recovery firmware chip would go, looks like Dell didn't opt for this feature. However, to the left is an unpopulated 10-pin header labeled SPY, which stands for Serial Peripheral Interface. This is a very popular communication protocol that I've featured in several of my past videos, such as programming AVRs with the Raspberry Pi, graphical LCD displays, polling analog water sensors, and recently, OLED displays on the ESP32 with MicroPython. Here's the firmware chip under a magnifier. I inverted the colors to improve readability. There's ink across the top that obscures the writing. If it were worse, some flux cleaner or acetone could be used to clean it up. It's a little hard to tell from the photo, but the chip is a Micronix MX25 L8005. The date code looks like the 14th week of 2007. It's an 8 megabit CMOS serial flash chip. Many chips have similar pinouts, but always check the datasheet. It supports reading and writing via SPI protocol. Since the Raspberry Pi has a SPI port, and the motherboard has a SPI header, in theory it should be relatively easy to reprogram the corrupt firmware. I used the continuity tester on my multimeter to tone out the SPI header. The necessary SPI pins, chip select, serial clock, slave in, slave out, BCC and ground are all connected from the chip to the header. Additionally, the hold and write protect pins are already pulled up with 1K resistors to VCC, which is required for programming. The header pinout adheres to a standard called SPI Universal Pin Header. I've included some documentation on my website. The Raspberry Pi SPI bus is comprised of CS, chip select, on GPIO 8, master in, slave out, MISO, on GPIO 9, master out, slave in, MOSI, on GPIO 10, and serial clock on GPIO 11. A ground from the Pi is connected to a ground on the header. The CS pins are connected together. MOSI is connected to slave in, SI. MISO is connected to slave out, SO. The serial clock pins are connected and a 3.3 volt pin on the Pi is connected to the VCC pin. Depending on the current draw of the motherboard, it might be necessary to use an external power supply to provide 3.3 volts, especially on an older first generation Pi, because their 3.3 volt rails 
can't source much current. I'm using a Pi 3, which should have enough power. I'm not sure if it's necessary, but it's recommended to remove the CMOS battery and CMOS clear jumper prior to programming. The Pi clock pin GPIO 11 is connected to the SPI header clock pin. The Pi MOSI pin GPIO 10 is connected to SI. A 3.3 volt pin is connected to VCC. Ground pins are connected. The Pi MISO GPIO 9 is connected to SO. The Pi CS GPIO 8 is connected to the CS on the header. Note the Pi is unplugged. I strongly recommend that you disconnect all power before making these connections. An ESD mat and an anti-static wrist strap would also be prudent. The Pi SPI interface is usually disabled by default. Click the Pi's main menu, click Preferences, click Raspberry Pi Configuration. Select the Interfaces tab, click SPI Enable. Then click OK to save the changes. Open a blank terminal and type sudo apt-get install flash rom. Flash ROM is an open source utility to read, write, erase, verify, and identify both serial and parallel BIOS chips. Flash ROM currently supports over 500 chips. Flash ROM double dash help provides a list of available commands. They're pretty straightforward. TAC R read, TAC W write, TAC B verify. TAC P is used to specify the programmer. Linux SPI would be specified for the Raspberry Pi SPI port. Okay, let's test the programmer. Flash ROM TAC P Linux underscore Pi colon dev equals slash dev slash spy dev 0, 0.0 comma spy speed equals 2000 that's kilohertz and tack uppercase v for verbose output no eprom or flash device found yeah something's not working that's unfortunate but not unexpected i did some troubleshooting off camera i tried swapping miso and mossy i tried all the jumper configurations i played around with the spy speed I hooked up a bench power supply to provide the 3.3 volts and experimented with higher voltages. I bypassed the header and clipped directly onto the chip, which by the way, test clips can be a good solution if your motherboard doesn't have a SPI header. None of that helped, so I hooked up my oscilloscope and enabled the SPI decoding. The yellow waveform is the MOSI. The cursor shows a high of around 3.3 volts. The MISO on channel 2 is fixed around 2 volts, so the chip is returning nothing but hex FF. Channel 3, the blue waveform, is the serial clock, and the cursor shows it's only reaching about 760 millivolts. That's problematic. Looks like there's existing circuit loading. Probably another IC or component on the motherboard is interfering with the logic levels. I'll clear the display, disconnect the SPI bus from the header, and run the flash ROM command again. As expected, with the motherboard at a circuit, the clock high looks much better at around 3.3 volts. Okay, plan B. I'll desolder the flash chip. If anyone out there is yelling at the screen a better solution, please go ahead and leave it in the comments. And even though the spy header didn't work for this board, I recommend you always try it first over chip removal because I've seen it work on other motherboards. Unless, of course, your BIOS chip is socketed, then just go ahead and pop it out. I don't have a hot air rework station, so instead I'll use Chip Quick, which is a lower melting point solder designed to remove surface mountain chips. First flux is applied to all the pins. For the record, soldering can be dangerous and you could destroy your motherboard, so please exercise caution. Chip quick is spread across to bridge the pins. A chisel tip on the iron would be preferable to this rusty conical tip. Unlike regular solder, the chip quick will stay molten for several seconds, which means you can use less prolonged heat. Sorry about the bad camera angle. I'm just heating both sides to mix the chip quick with the original solder. I'd recommend EST tweezers or a vacuum pick over these needle nose pliers. Okay, the chip came off easy, and it looks like there's no damage. I could have probably just lifted the problematic pins off the pads, but I think chip removal is safer because the pins and pads are easy to break. Here's a 200mm SOP8 to DIP8 IC socket adapter. You can buy them on Amazon for around $4 US. It plugs into the little breadboard with room for one row on each side. Press down on the adapter to open the jaws. Carefully drop the chip in. Pay attention to the orientation. I have pin 1 at the top right, which is designated by a small circle recessed into the chip. Releasing the jaws clamps the chip in place. Wiring the flash chip directly to the Pi is very similar to the SPI header hookup. VCC goes to 3.3 volts, the grounds are connected, the clocks are connected, MOSI goes to slave in, and MISO goes to slave out. It's also necessary to pull high, hold, and write protect to 3.3 volts. Again, pay attention to the orientation of the chip. The small circle indicates pin 1 
which on this chip is CS. The VCC pin is connected to a 3.3 volt rail on the breadboard. The hold pin is also connected to 3.3 volts. The right protect or WP pin is also wired to 3.3 volts. The ground pin is connected to a ground rail. The Pi serial clock pin is connected to the chip's clock pin. MISO is connected to SO. MOSI is connected to PSI. The CS pins are connected together. A 3.3 volt pin from the Pi is connected to a 3.3 volt rail. A ground pin is connected to the ground rail. I really should be doing this with the power off, but I'm eager to see if it works. Since the Pi is on, it would have been safer to connect the ground before the other connections to avoid stray voltages on the signal lines. Again, it's always better to make connections with the power off. Okay, let's try flash ROM again. There we go. Found Micronics flash chip MX25L8005. Now it's working. We can read and write the firmware. I'll run flash ROM again, but lose the TAC V and add TAC R to read the current firmware on the chip and save it to a file called bricked bin. Everything looks good. LS shows the bricked bin file. Even though this firmware is corrupt, it's a good idea to save it because if something goes wrong when writing, it could be helpful to compare the old with the new. Also, some motherboard vendors embed IDs in the free space on the chip that could be required. At this point, it would be a good idea to run a verify using lowercase v to ensure a correct read, but I'll skip it. I went ahead and downloaded the latest BIOS firmware update utility from the Dell support site to a different PC. Unfortunately, the firmware is wrapped up in a Windows executable. I tried uncompression software, but I couldn't unpack the binaries. There are sites online to download dumped firmware, but I think it's a bit sketchy in terms of security. I prefer to stick to the manufacturer's site. To extract the binary file from the executable, a working Windows PC is required. Open PowerShell. CD dollar sign env colon temp changes to the temporary folder. LS shows the directory contents. Switch back to the desktop and run the downloaded BIOS executable. The program throws an error because I'm not using a Dell Vostro. And even if you were, just stop and do not proceed any further. Either way, do not close the message prompt. Instead, switch back to PowerShell. Alice again shows that a new temporary folder has been added called underscore 526f.temp. CD into the new folder. LS shows the firmware binary file, which is indicated by the dot bin extension. cp7b1d1p19.bin space dollar sign env colon user profile backslash desktop copies the binary file to the desktop. You need to copy it out because the temporary folder will be deleted as soon as you close the prior message prompt. Okay, the binary firmware file is now on the desktop and the prompt can be closed. Back on the Pi CD into the downloads folder. I already transferred the firmware.bin file into the folder using a USB flash drive. Copy the file name to the clipboard. Flash ROM is run again. TACR is changed to TACW for write and the file name is pasted in from the clipboard. All right, the write's done and it's verified. That's all it takes to program the BIOS chip. Off camera, I soldered the chip back onto the motherboard. Make sure you use regular solder and not the chip quick. I replaced my rusty soldering iron tip with a hoof tip, which worked very well. I also replaced the clear CMOS jumper and installed a new CR2032 battery. I reinstalled the motherboard into the computer and now I'm crossing my fingers. Okay, here's the big test. A single beep is a good sign. BIOS revision 1.0.3 is loaded. So far so good. Looks like the BIOS found the boot drive and started the OS. Alright, the time and date are wrong, but it's working. Please let me know if you found this video helpful or interesting, and let me know if I should make more repair tutorials. You can support this channel by subscribing, leaving a like, and sharing. Thanks for watching.